here to God for many, many years, and then he had a, another calling, and he's done a few things since then, and uh, we um, invited George to come in and talk to us about what's going on in his life, because you've touched so many lives in Wayne County for so many years that, you know, people like Bob and I are interested in, what are you doing these days? What's going on? How are you serving? Well, first of all, it was great being a, a, a part of what, what, what God done at Unity Church of God. We were there for 17 years. You know, we started in that uh, storefront of town, that old furniture place, right? And uh, and God just really, really moved in a, in a in a fabulous way. It was kind of a a shock to us. Y'all know that that um, uh, eight years ago now, uh, we lost our son right right down the road here from your uh, radio station. Our son was in an accident and and was uh, and was killed, Travis. And uh, and so so we we go away every year on his birthday, which is July seventeenth. And we, we really prayed, see, God, okay, what now? And um, and five years, or three years ago, uh, we went down to Jekyll Island. That was Travis's favorite spot. And we uh, we, we just spent, Debbie and I just spent a weekend there and, and praying, seeking the Lord, and, and really felt impressed that, that we needed to resign unity and, and, and travel and, and evangelize and mentor and minister to, uh, to ministers. And so that's what we've been doing for the last three years. It's been amazing. Uh, it's just taken off like... Nothing we'd ever thought. I mean, in in three years, I've preached at over 200 churches, uh, well over two over 10,000 people, and and it's just we go to 11 different states now. Uh, we mentor about a dozen different pastors. Uh, uh, my denomination has made me missionary evangelist to the United States of America. So uh, missionary evangelist. Yeah, it's been it's been a real. Uh, it's been a real amazing, amazing thing. We sold our home here in 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 Jessup. You know, we lived in Barrington, right right up from you. Right. Uh, we sold that home, and we, uh, I had bought a farm out on 203, and uh, we built what we call a sabbatical house, a little two story uh, sabbatical house that we moved into uh, while we built another home for us, and we're about 60 percent complete with that home. Uh, when on we the moved, same farm on the, on our farm on okay. the same farm. When we move into that that home, we'll open up the sabbatical house for ministers to come stay. In when they lose a child, lose a spouse, or when they just need need a, a, a break, you know, Jessup is a phenomenal place to uh, to, to to be, and and uh, we're seven miles from Omaha River, two miles from Lake Grace, forty miles from the ocean. I'm a member of a hunting club that's uh, one mile from my house, about three thousand acres that four wheelers and and trails and all. We got horses to ride, we got catfish and a pond to catch, and it's just a good place to go and. Uh, Go and stay. Matter of fact, I think you and Mom want to get called to preach and just go stay out there with us for a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we sort of kind of preach sometimes on the Butcher Bob show. Yeah, but not, not that same type of preaching. I hear some of the great <laughs> sermons. It, well, it, it convicts me sometimes. When you <laughs> now, when you left here three years ago, you were also in the process of rebuilding some uh, churches that were that uh, the building had been closed up and yeah. you're trying to start a uh, new congregation there. How did that go? It went. It went amazing. And we took the church over in Waycross, Georgia, and what I done is I got it up to about 80, and then then I uh, uh, I hired a campus pastor, and I phased out, and let him come in, and they had 708 this past Easter Sunday morning. It's just been amazing. They're averaging about 370 during the summer, uh, and it's been back on. I mean, from going closed down to no people to being that in just two and a half years, that's pretty amazing. And then uh, we took one in Hinesville, uh, and it we got it back. On his, on his feet, but but it was hard to to stay with a, a single church and travel like we're traveling. So we just gave that over to the campus pastor, and 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 we, we're not doing. We we mentor a lot of churches in a lot of different states, but as far as going in and and pastoring one, we don't do that in, in, in any or we hadn't in the last two years. Okay, we've got uh, George Monsley in here. Do, do we call you pastor? Or do we call you uh, uh, missionary? missionary? What do we call you? I was a pastor for 25 years. Most people still call me uh, uh, a pastor, but but I'm I'm not I'm not really a um, a pastor. A pastor of a church. Right. I minister to a lot of a lot of people. A lot of people. We had what five? I found out you can have. Have a, uh, a maximum of five thousand friends on your Facebook, and we mm -hmm. we've, we've had that for a long time. So I had to open up a new page called uh, Moxley Ministries, uh, and so so it, it would love for love for everyone to be a, a be a friend of ours. There we do a lot of devotional things, simple truths from God's Word, little videos, and 
and uh, inspirational things on on that Facebook page. And that it's Facebook amazing. page yeah. once again it is. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, it's, it's Moxley Ministries. George Moxley, Moxley Ministries. George Moxley yeah, Ministries. George Moxley Ministries. The other one is George slash Debbie Ministries, which we we are George slash Debbie Moxley. We put the same thing on both, but again, we're limited out on friends. And Facebook's an amazing thing. If you don't like somebody, you can just unfriend them. I ain't never <laughs> seen anything. <laughs> I've never seen anything like, quite like quite like that. But it has been amazing what we're doing. Like I said, we go to eleven different eleven different states. We're going to pick up two more states this year: uh, New Mexico and Indiana. Uh, we've been invited to go uh, into those states and help with uh, uh, with some churches. Our denomination uh, has a, which is Church of God, which is Church of God, has given me an assignment of working with church revitalization now through the through the general uh, department. And so so we. Uh, if you if you notice if you notice the churches aren't aren't as strong as we once were in in, in the United States of America. Matter of fact, uh, all the statistics point that U.S. United States has become the the second largest mission field in all the world of un, unchurched people, and so we uh, we we really are concentrating on on revitalizing that. Uh, that 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 church that's that's declining. Matter of fact, uh, I've thought about it. It would probably cause conflict, so I hadn't done it yet. I thought about having me a bunch of hats and T-shirts made, make the church great again, and go on a campaign. <laughs> <laughs> but it has missionary evangelist is what you call it. Missionary now. evangelist to the United States Thanks. of America. And so we still we still live here in Jessup. We love Jessup. We keep our Debbie don't travel with me as much as uh, as uh, I wanted to because uh, we we have three grandsons that uh, that she. Uh, uh, it's going to be hard to get her away from That's us. Right. Right. And plus, we 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 were a vital part in their lives. Plus, we've got cows and stuff on the farm and so cows. Yeah, I've got about fourteen cows and a and a a, 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 a horse and a donkey out there. So, uh, <laughs> now, what do you do with that donkey? Well, the donkey keeps the coyotes away. So, oh, it does. Uh, yeah, huh? the yeah, donkey you, keeps the coyotes away. If you away. notice, if you travel around, uh, um, uh, yeah, you do see those every so often. Yeah, fields donkey, with the horses a female and female donkey, a Jenny, a Jenny. A Jenny does. They keep the coyotes. Uh, away and so uh so, so they're honorary things they'll, they're, they'll they're, go after them and kick at them and stuff like that yep yep they, they keep they keep the calf safe for uh for sure but well, no they, wonder you see them around there that's that that's news for me yeah, no wonder yeah, why you yeah. saw saw donkeys inside with the, yeah, that's with the, the cows and other animals ever so often well, that's that's the reason right there that's the reason right there but what we're doing has really has really been amazing we've seen uh, a lot of churches have tied into us they have us back regular and uh and so we, we were able to mentor that pastor what god done at unity was simply amazing i mean the we went over a thousand members and eight and a half million dollars worth of property in just that length of time and and uh, and we we try to duplicate that in a lot of different places and just show the the elements of um of what what took place there using uh, the experiences that y'all had at unity and, and and using that experience and knowledge to help these other churches right. rebuild or build. Right. you're you're absolutely absolutely right we 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 preach I, I brought some gifts for you guys. Oh, we, you uh, did. We have a. Um, you brought gifts. We have, we have a, a product table that that supplements because a lot of churches that need revival uh, can't afford revival. Mm -hmm. uh, we go to churches. I went to Louisiana the other day and preached to twelve people, you know, and then but then I go to Tennessee and preach to three thousand people. So so it all balances out. But what with one of the things we do is we we have a product table that we set up uh, in churches. Debbie, uh, my wife, she makes uh, she makes t-shirts, and so she's got all the equipment and all that so i made one for the world famous butch and uh, i'm, butch. Butch, I'm butch. sorry and i made one for the world famous bob and so uh, world famous butch. She, that's she, what it says right she, there world famous butch there you go there you go and she uh she done that we also thank you so much oh you're you're absolutely welcome we also do uh, um, a lot of cds and preaching cds okay and one of the things that we uh one of the projects <laughs> one of the projects that we've done is we uh, um, after after I done this for about about two years, mm -hmm. uh, we we I realized I wasn't seeing as many people saved in revivals as I was as a local pastor. My goal as a pastor was always to win a hundred people a year to the Lord, and we done that. Uh, but the uh, um, as evangelizing, when I sat down and done my my year end report, I'd only seen seventy nine people saved, and I said, wait a minute, you know. And so I got away and prayed and said, Lord, you know this ain't. The, the main thing is to get people saved, and and it really dawned on me that that sinners aren't coming to church anymore. I'm preaching to the people that 
that are coming to church. And so basically so, uh, uh, the preaching of the choir. Right, right. So we yeah. started two things to, to, to do that, to, to reach new people. And I, I've done a project called John 316, where I just sat down in a sound, sound booth and reported a CD, an 18-minute long CD on the plan of salvation on John 3, uh, 316. And we offer those to to uh, everybody. I bet you we've given I don't know probably five thousand of them away, and 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 uh, we really get a lot of feedback. And how do you give these away? Well, we we uh, as I as I preach, I'll I'll say to the back, you know, to the to the congregation, we have these mm-hmm. CDs on the product table. If you'd like one to give to somebody, please pick it okay. up and take it. Uh, if you'd like to make a donation toward it, please do, you know, because that's what we uh, that's what we do. And uh, and so we've had a lot of feedback, a lot of calls. I put I still put my cell number and everything on everything I do. So so we have a lot of calls back from people that heard this and, and give their life to the Lord. And and the next thing, I want to give each one of y'all one of those. All right, I thank you so much. I want to share it with someone. Also, we uh, um, uh, I went away, one of the great evangelists of uh, our denomination, he's kind of the Billy Graham of, of uh, the Church of God, is uh, a man named Carl Richardson. He is just a phenomenal, phenomenal man. And he uh, actually, the bicentennial of our of our nation, uh, he put together a prayer, a prayer of uh, uh, meeting at the at the uh, Capitol in Washington, and they was tens of thousands of people came. I mean, he's a really, and he's an evangelist. So we went and spent a couple of days with him, and he shared with me, he said, uh, I told him, I said, you look, I'm, I only seen 79 people saved last year, which is good, but I only seen 79 people saved. And he said, well, he said, 87% of the people that get saved get saved before the age of, thir- of, of 15. He said, are you preaching to the, to the kids? I said, well, not, not a whole lot. So what I've done, and you'll get a kick out of this, especially especially Bob with a winter, winter chicken dinner, but uh, I started a, a, a pre-service on Wednesday for children, and I, I take a chicken, and I put that chicken to sleep. I'm, you know, I'm raised on a farm. I know how to put a chicken to sleep. And uh, and I, I and I preach about I, I preach about the gift that God gave them of being an egg. And I I take that egg from an egg to a scrambled egg to a chicken nugget to a bitty to a to a grown chicken. And I resurrect that chicken at the end. And so far this year we've had 246 people give their life to Jesus Christ. So it's been a and how do you know what's amazing? I, I just take I do an illustrated message and All right, I, it's I online, do, right? And I, oh yeah, or yeah, person. yeah. We've had it online, mm-hmm. uh, but but we do it. But for uh, uh, the services and revivals that we do, we okay. do it on Wednesday night, okay. All right. and, uh, and 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 it's been just it's been simply amazing. I, I'll take a I've done this in the school system here in Wayne County back when we had uh, when I was was here. I had a ministry called Fact Freedom Against Control and Temptations, and we would go into the schools and do and right. do different things. and And I've done it with uh, in the schools with uh, that egg representing the gift that's inside of all of us. We've all got gifts, uh, but in the church I do it a little bit a little bit more spiritual. I talk about the gift. Of salvation, mm-hmm. and I, I take that egg and talk about how people waste it and drop it. Uh, some people eat a scrambled egg and use it up, and but if you'll take care of it, and it'll mature into a grown hen, and you can have all the chicken nuggets and eggs you want. And uh, and it's just been amazing to see that to see that uh, to see that happen. So it's thinking outside the box, but it's working. It's it's really it's really working. Another thing that we uh, that we've done our our experience of losing. Uh, well, losing Travis, it really y- y- y'all know y'all were y'all were yeah. y'all walked through with that with us a lot, and so uh, but uh, it really it really grabbed hold of us because the modern day message uh, in the church, and and I'm not I'm not being negative toward anybody, but one of the modern day messages is if you'll uh, if you'll pay your tithe, if you'll come to church, if you'll worship God. Nothing bad will happen to you, you know. So, so when we lost Travis, he kind of turned me for a flip because of the fact that wait a minute, I've I've uh, I've done everything right, and here I here I have lost my uh, lost my son. And so so I was riding down the road one day, and I was I was listening to a well-known preacher on radio, and um, and 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 he said this. He said, and I'm not, again, I'm not being negative against anyone, but but he said that a woman in his church daughter got in a wreck, and uh, and the daughter uh, um, uh, should have been killed. The car was totaled, but this woman goes goes to church on Sunday, and this woman. Uh, gives to the church, and this woman is a worshiper, so God protected her daughter. Well, man, it just devastated me. I mean, I was glad the woman's daughter lived, but, man, I had to pull my truck over and kneel down and pray. I said, Lord, Lord, I, I've missed two Sundays in 29 years. I've paid tithe on every dollar that's come in my hand, and, and I, I worship at the drop of a hat, and I keep a hat in my truck all the time. And uh, why did Travis die? You know, and the Lord just really impressed on me. I don't hear audible voices and I keep that donkey out there. You know, there's a scripture in the Bible where a donkey talked. Mine ain't said a word. <laughs> Mine ain't said a word. But the Lord, the Lord really impressed on me that 
that uh, he told us in his word that we would we, we would face tribulation. We would have fires to go through and rivers to cross. Uh, uh, Brother Bob's going went through one right. this this sickness, but he said, "Be of good cheer. I've overcome the world, and I'm I'm with you." And so one of the things we done is we. Uh, we, uh, I, I, I liken the experience of, of losing someone. I liken the experience of, uh, of going through bad times, of being in a cave. Uh, and so I, I put together a message I preach all over the world, literally, uh, called the Lord of the Cave. And, uh, and, and I'm actually writing a book called Lord of the Cave. And so it's, it's been, it's been one of the most effective things we've done. And, uh, and so I record, I record that. And, and what is the theme we, of the, uh, of the CD message and the book will be? It's, it, I, I talk, I used David in 1 Samuel chapter 22, where, uh, where everything was going right with him. He was anointed to be king, but he was, in one day's time, he was, he was hiding in a cave. Right. And I, and I talk about the experience of the cave and I, I use all the people in the Bible that, that fled to a cave and, and, and teach and preach what what was the result of that, and so that being said, uh, I, I made this CD, and it's really really been uh, really been effective. Another thing we done when I, we first lost Travis, we uh, um, I didn't want anything good to come from that. I mean, I, I, I was kind of. I guess selfish. I didn't want nothing good to come from it. I lost my son, you know. And um, at any rate, we uh, after a while, I, I noticed the people uh, that that were not really trained. Where the the church is being kind of ignorant when it comes to death. I had people say the dumbest things to me, uh, such as, "Well, God needed an angel in His choir." Well, that's. God would kill my son for another member in the choir. That's kind of crazy. One person came up to me and said, God needed another rose in his garden. And I said, wow, maybe he'll need a sack of fertilizer tomorrow and you'll die. And then, because our son ain't no rose and our son ain't no choir member. Uh, that ain't what the Bible teaches. So I put together a series uh, called uh, Beyond the Grave. And I teach what happens at death. Where does, where do people, where do, and that has been one of the most effective things we've done also. Anytime uh, we have someone that, that uh, in the ministry, especially that lose a son or daughter uh, the general department will have me minister to him and send him a copy of that uh of that beyond the grave is what I is what okay. I call it, and so it's been an amazing thing. But I also brought y'all uh, a copy of the Lord of the Cave. I wanted to give y'all y'all let me come on. I wanted to. I wanted well, to thank you so much. Let's show up time. It's Christmas at the Butch and Bob Show. But uh, but we have in, we have enjoyed what we're doing. We love pastoring Unity Church of God. Oh, we thought we'd be there till uh, till Jesus came or till we was called home. Uh, we uh we we love Jessup. I don't see us ever leaving. Uh, Jessup, Georgia, our farm out there. We uh, we just uh, we just appreciate God so much for allowing us to to live here. We love Jessup. We've kind of remained quiet for three years. You know, this is our third year. This July makes three years that we've uh, that we've done that, and we've concentrated uh, outside. But uh, but 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 I told Debbie the other day. I said, you know, we really uh, we really need to get involved in our community a little more because I love Jessup, Georgia, and I and always always. Uh, have I was just born just a bread when I die I be just a dead and so uh, so it uh, uh, we 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 love what we're doing we love Pastor Unity we love the people of Jessup any of these things that I just mentioned if you'd like to uh, like to get or you can call us at two, at nine one two two five six one three six two is my cell number or you can Facebook us at George Moxley Ministries on Facebook and not only do you have your Facebook page you also have George Moxley dot com yep George Moxley Dot com, so you do have a website, our website. on Facebook, because see, Bob and I don't have Facebook, yeah. uh, but GeorgeMonchley.com, and then of course you got your Facebook page, yeah. uh, George Monchley in this morning, uh, former pastor of Unity Church of God, now basically uh, an evangelist, goes all over the place and preaches and talks and ministers and helps, uh, not only with the uh, the congregations, but also with ministers too. It, it's, been a, it's been amazing to travel our nation, we go, uh, I'm going to Maine next month, and, uh, and my, my wife... Well, that's a good place to be during the dog days of yeah. It is, it is, it is. Uh, one of the things, one of the being a riding partner. I mean. <laughs> one of the one of the benefits of doing what we're doing is we we travel like you know. I'm a big hunter, and so uh, it's it's funny. I always get to some of these states with the biggest deer during deer season. I think that's God. It's got to be. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. My wife yeah. the other day when we were doing our budget, she said, "Down." She said, "We got a problem." I said, "What's that?" She said, "You bought hunting license in five states last year. You got <laughs> you got to back off of that a little bit." Next month we go to Maine, and it just happens to be bear season. So I'll do a little bear hunting while I'm uh, while I'm out there, and, and uh, we do we also do what we call impact conferences, where we we train leaders and we train uh, uh, we go in on a Saturday and take a whole Saturday and train leaders. We average about seventy uh, leaders everywhere that we that we go. It just seems to 
have average about 70. We do that. We've done it, uh, I don't know, we do about one a month in, in about, about 10 different states. We've done that so far. And that's what we'll be doing in Maine. We'll be going in on a Friday night and preaching. I'm bringing a, a guy that's a, 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 a teacher of, of worship. Uh, he's going with me. He's from uh, Illinois. We're going to meet in Maine. And uh, we're going to have service on Friday night, and then we'll do training all day Saturday, and then we'll have service on Sunday. Then we'll hunt Monday and Tuesday and come back <laughs> and come back home. So, uh, But it's been a... It's been a real, I appreciate y'all so much for letting me come on. Uh, I've been wanting to tell tell people in Wayne County what we're doing because I've had people come up and say, how you like in retirement? Well, we retired. I'm, I'm only Yeah, here. you're not retired. If I own a radio station, I might retire. No, right? you I'm, <laughs> 56. I'm 56. I can't, I can't retire by no means. And some uh, some folks think we're doing different stuff, but no, we're we're still 100% full-time ministry and have been from... Uh, now, who from sets up your schedule for you? Does the, uh, the, the Church of God home uh, office do that? Been, how does this work? It's been literally amazing. I, uh, uh, when I started doing this, I said, you know, God, I'm not... Uh, Pastor in Unity, Unity was a large church considered, you know. I mean, it's not a large according to our nation, but it was large uh, for rural areas. You know, we had a little over a thousand members, so it was a, considered a large church. And I always had people call to me wanting to come preach. And I said, God, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to call people. And I'm just going to go by faith. And whoever calls me, that's who we mm -hmm. look. And and so far, uh, in three years, I've been on five Sundays. And so, and so, uh, and a lot of them I chose to be off. Like I preached two Mother's Days in a row, and uh, this last Mother's Day, I said I'm staying home with Mama. And so, <laughs> so, uh, so it's been amazing. People so call me. calls you then, right? Yeah, the pastors call me. All right. So it's not through the home office itself. They right. they've got you set in a certain right. position. They've got you uh, an official as a, as an evangelist with the Church of God. But the, your schedule yeah. is based on who calls you. Who and, calls, and who needs who calls me. Now, there has been some state overseers that will call me and say, listen, uh, I've got these churches that are struggling. Will you come in and, and spend a week with them? Now, I do have some of that happening. Mm -hmm. But mostly what I get is pastors just calling and saying, hey, I'd like to book you from here to here. Now, we have been doing some state camp meetings. We've done the West Virginia camp meeting three weeks ago, and it was amazing. That's when you have about a 1,000 people come together and uh, from all the churches in West Virginia, and they allowed me to preach for six nights, five nights. And so it was an amazing an, an amazing event. So, so we we go. We, we spend most of our time. Seems like in Southern Illinois, West Virginia, and Kentucky, and uh, North Carolina is where we where we stay most of our time. But but we do go. We, well, we've been to eleven different states. Is where we've been going. So okay. We well, you, you know, you've got a lot of ministers that turn to you for advice, for help, for 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 prayers. Who are your mentors? Who do you turn to? Everybody needs somebody to yeah. turn to in their times of need or questions or whatever. And I've always practiced having mentors. I always felt like a man needs two people in his life. He needs one that he's helped pulling up and one that's pulling him up. And so I use like Carl Richardson, like I mentioned, in, mm -hmm. down in Florida. Mitchell Toll uh, is one of my mentors in uh, in Kentucky. Uh, I, I'm J. Dan Hudson in North Carolina. I have a lot of men that, that have been where I, I want to go. And, uh, and they uh, they call me regular, encourage me regular, and I call them and just seek advice. I believe in in mentor, and I believe in being a mentor, and I believe in having having uh, mentors. Bob could really relate to that in being in baseball, of having someone that you reach up to and someone that you reach back for. And I think every person needs that in their uh, in their life. And so right, we, right. We, we definitely have a good um, mentor structure uh, for what we do. Okay. Sure. So, uh, Evangelist uh, George Moxley, different calling you now that, instead of yeah. Pastor George Moxley, uh, traveling the United States, uh, working with churches, working with ministers, and uh, but still lives here in Wayne County, he has a farm here in, in, in the county, in the process of building a new home there, yeah. and then you will also have a retreat there for pastors who are going through times of need right. uh, when, when your house is built. Our denomination, actually, our General Assembly is uh, next month, where all the church got people come together, all the ministers, and one of the things our agenda is to is start uh, uh, allow, start requiring actually pastors that's been in the church more than five years a single church uh, to take a 30-day sabbatical so the sabbatical house is coming in at a good time uh, for people to be able to just come and just regroup and and go uh, go again we haven't we haven't a lot of uh, 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 the statistics are, are horrible when it comes to ministry uh, ministers are, are quitting at a rapid rate 
Uh, and that's all denominations, too. Yeah, all denominations. Uh, not just, just church, you all denominations. Why, why do you think pastors are resigning so much these the, days compared to the years pr- ago? I think the pressure of it in today's society, uh, there's so many distractions from uh, from church that, that people get discouraged, and apathy has been a real big thing uh, in the church. People that used to lead have sat back, and, and the pastors go in with all these expectations, and they and they uh, uh, they're, 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 they're looked at by all the eyes of the congregation. Congregation, and we're seeing a lot of pastors. I mean, like you said, in every denomination, the average age of a, of a preacher now is 54, and that's that's a, that's a sad thing because statistics say that a preacher reaches people on five years either side of his age. So if you're 54, you're reaching people from what uh, 49 to 59, and those people are usually already in church somewhere, and so the churches are not are not are not growing. And the, the answer to that is develop. Uh, staff to reach every every age group, and most churches aren't where they have staff. There's a single man running it, and and so it it, it the church as a whole has declined, has declined or or grown stagnant all over our all over our nation, and that's really sad. That's really sad because the church is so much more than just coming to coming together and worship God. That's the key thing, but it, it, it teaches morals and values, and and we're seeing the moral and values of our nation kind of decline as the church has. So it's so important to to revitalize that church, and a lot of people don't have. Uh, there's there's what, about eighty percent of of Wayne County don't go to church. We've got about a hundred churches. Yeah, we've talked about that before. You know, you're right around Wayne County. You see yeah. sixty, seventy, eighty churches out yeah. there. You mm-hmm. see new ones popping up all the time in empty buildings. Uh, but still, on a given Sunday, you only have about what twenty percent actually about in the church. Twenty percent actually in. And and I want to say this: if you don't have a pastor, um, I, not only do we minister to ministers. But we minister to the, the people. I mean, call us if you need prayer. If you need need, I, I still visit the jails. I still visit the hospitals when people call me. And and uh, I I went to I was in Illinois the other day, and a lady come to me. You know, we done the big drug drug the drug rehab stuff here, and and a lady come to me and said, my daughter's in jail. Uh, and so I went down and seen her. Not only went down and seen her, me and my wife brought her back home to Jessup and got her involved in the in the rehab system. So just because we're evangelists, just because we're ministering to to uh, ministers, we minister to people, period. Oh, we see the, the, the drug epidemic just seems to be growing big time here, uh, not only in our area, but also um, uh, statewide and nationwide. I, are you seeing that when you're out there ministering how yeah. drugs are just taking, I mean, every type of drug you can think of, from prescriptions to all the way down to meth and everything between? I preached in uh, Huntsville, uh, West Virginia the other day, and it's the number one uh, place for drug overdose deaths in, the, in our nation. And so it's, a, it's an epidemic across our nation, not just Wayne County. We see a lot in Wayne County because we're we're, uh, we're 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 small town and we, we 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 see everything that goes on, but but it's like that everywhere. I mean, it, it's really. I can ask a congregation. I preach a message and I ask a congregation, uh, who's got who's got someone on drugs, and and I would say from. Forty to sixty percent of the people will raise their hand. That I mean, that's just the ones that are admitting they got a friend or relative. Right, that right, involved. right, right. And so we still, you know, I preached thirty-two funerals here in Wayne County when I was pastor of people that that OD. Drugs are a, a serious thing, and the only answer, uh, Christian rehab has a fifty-two percent success rate. Sacred rehab has a one to three percent success rate. So the only answer is to get God and purpose in your life uh, to get rid of the, the the reason not to do drugs has to be greater than the reason to do drugs for people to get off. But again, that's one of the reasons I do this this, this illustration with kids. The number, a hundred percent of the people that never take take drugs stay off of drugs. <laughs> so, uh, so it, it's uh, that prevention that prevention message is important is important too. So, um, okay. so but, uh, All right, you got uh, uh, evangelist George Moxley here today, former pastor of Unity Church of God, still lives here in Wayne County, He's traveling the country, uh, doing uh, well, talking to ministers, uh, helping them, also doing revivals and uh, teaching teaching and just uh, helping whoever you can it seems to be whoever right. needs your help you're there to help them right that's what that's what we do that's what we're called to do and it's been it's been we miss unity church of god naturally we miss being just of georgia miss being involved with you guys so much as we used to be doing the easter egg hunt and all that together but but what we're, but we're doing still now, doing that uh, yeah, I, I know i know Pastor but i just Anderson i just miss it i'm not you just miss it. <laughs> but, uh, but but the uh, uh what we're doing now is very is very um we're called to do it, and it's very obvious because of the way God just keeps us booked and keeps us going. 
Well, you know, a lot of a lot of uh, folks go through that. Not only pastors, but uh, just uh, uh, people who work in normal jobs. They they take a job, they get transferred, or they take another. They wonder sometimes when things happen. Yeah. At, uh, at that particular time, I know that you were three years ago when you were here on the world famous Butch and Bob show, talking about the reasons that you were moving on from uh, Unity to do something else, and uh, now you have, are into it three years, and you're excited about what you're doing and the oh, yeah. lives that you're touching it's throughout the country. It's been amazing. And again, again, if, if anyone would like, a, a, especially the beyond the grave, if you've lost someone and you're struggling with what what happened, call us. We'll get you a, we'll get you a set of those beyond the grave CDs. It's uh, two five six one three six two. I, I still got the cell number I had when I was in a, when I was uh, when I was pastor. And it's a whole it's a whole uh, 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 series that and I. And all the information you have is on George Monks. Dot com, right? .com. I'm on my Facebook, and again, my, my personal cell number is the one that rings in my pocket. It's 912-256-1362. So, call us any questions or comments for for George this morning? It's good to see. Appreciate your gifts. Hey, man, I thank y'all for letting yeah, me I, I can't believe that. We've actually got our own T-shirts now, Bob, that says World Famous Butch and World Famous Bob. Well, there you go. <laughs> now, uh, they're going to probably say humility is not one of our traits if we wear this. <laughs> but but, but, see, but I thing, love it. I like this about T-shirt. It is, is you did didn't buy it. It was I given didn't, to but it was given so, to me so, and made, and it's so, part of the show. If you bought it, you may be, you may be, uh, <laughs> you know, but I gave it to you. You gave y'all, it to us. Because y'all are world famous, for sure. All right. Uh, so what's next? What, you, what What's next? I know you're fixing to hit the road up to Maine. Is that right? Yep. I'll, I'll do that at the end of August. Uh, we're booked solid till the, till second, then. Okay. Till the second week of December. We're booked solid. We're starting to book 2019 now. Uh, we'll well, be, does your wife keep up with your schedule? Uh, I mean, she, she, she helps do you do it? She helps me. I took the calendar and then I tell her so, uh, <laughs> uh, because we uh, uh, the, the people call the call me and I, I've only double booked one time in three years I had to say oh wait a minute I didn't write one down okay. so uh, so we uh, we're booked solid every week from now till uh, till second week of December uh, and then uh, and then we, uh, um, we we are starting to book 2019 we're about ten weeks booked into 2000 and and, uh, and 19. We will be going to General Assembly uh, next month and we will start out the, the, the new job that we the new assignment uh, which is going to keep us doing the same thing. We'll just be uh, more of a, uh, an official appointment uh, from the from the general offices. And that church appointment is called what? In church revitalization, we'll be working with church USA. We'll be working with USA missions. I'll be yeah. a, I'll be a, 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 an outreach person for uh, for uh, USA World Missions. And so it's been it's an amazing journey, and it's uh, it's good to see churches that 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 are that are hurting and bring revival to them. It's just been an amazing journey. We just love it. Okay. Well, I know that you were a beloved pastor here for many, many years, so 17 years, as you mentioned, and now that you're on a, a new track, a, a new road, a new path, and you seem to be enjoying yourself and, and, and the folks that you're touching, the things that you're doing. Yep. It's an amazing to see God move, for sure. Yeah. For sure. All right. Appreciate you coming in, well, George. George Monson. So when will you have your book uh, finished? Do you know? I'm um, hopefully, hopefully we'll have it uh, published by the first of the year. First that's year. Our, that's well, our goal. Is that give us a call and year. reschedule another uh, a time on the Butch and Bob show so we can have the book here and oh, yeah. uh, talk about it. Okay. Oh, yeah, that'll be great. That'll All be right. Great. Take care. Thank you. All Thank right, George Monson, our special guest this morning here on the world famous Butch and Bob show. Time now is eight thirty three one zero five point five FM and Jess of Big Dog Country Radio, world famous Butch and Bob show, brought to you by Mike Birch Ford in Blackshear by Jessup Premium Stores located out here on the Waycross Highway and by Murphy Builder Supply.